Um, I'm Corrigan Goldsmith, and I'm from Solon, Iowa, and I go to St. Ambrose. Um, so as the intern, um, last year, was that, yeah, last year, uh, I worked with Loxie and QCI, um, as well as APJ, Ambrosians for Peace and Justice, and um, my, one of my main goals as the QCI slash CCHD intern was to kind of connect APJ with QCI. So um, I was kind of the liaison between the two and um, kind of kept up to um, what was going on with the community um, with APJ, um, made that kind of connection there, um, as well as helped out QCI with all sorts of stuff in the office. Um, one of our big projects was the, um, what was November, the breakfast, the QCI breakfast, and getting together the pamphlet for that and all the donations and um, and then all of the other fundraisers and um, that's some other stuff we did. Oh, it feels like ages ago. Um, but one of my favorite things about the internship was all of the trainings I got to go to. So in May, we went out to D.C. and Nick gets to go next month. Um, and it was so awesome to actually be there at the CCHD headquarters and really um, dive deep into the social justice and two feet of social justice specifically and learn all about that. Um, that was a really great opportunity. And then QCI sends us to um, national leadership training and that is um, what I've, I mean, I've used that information and that's those skill, that skill set I learned there to this day, I would say daily, um, in every encounter um, that I come to. Um, but as the alumni intern, um, right now I'm still working on uh, the mental health court initiative kind of with APJ mostly, um, creating the interest and keeping it alive there. Um, we just had a meeting last night and I said, don't forget, uh, mental health court date's coming up because uh, there's a lot going on this month, every Wednesday this month. So um, there's a lot going on with that and there's a lot of movement around that in our community. So. Um, working to create that within um, the college atmosphere as well because there's a lot of power there, I believe. Um, I'm Rachel Dunlap. I'm from Keokuk, Iowa, and I also go to St. Ambrose, graduating next month. Um, yay! yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am. I did a lot of the same things that Corey did, helped with the fundraising breakfast, which is a long process. Um, I'm currently helping with the Mental Health Court Task Force, so that's been really exciting because we've made a lot of progress since I started in September, going from really having almost nothing and no community leaders involved to having almost everybody in the community um, at the table that we need, and then hoping to get Mental Health Court in Scott County by the end of 2016. That's been really exciting to be a part of something so big especially since I'm really passionate about restorative justice, that's been like really awesome to be in that process and learn like what it takes to get those initiatives started. Um, I've also been helping Christian, who is another intern at QCI, a little bit with the um, community ID campaign, uh, trying to get a community ID in Scott County. Um, they're currently still getting surveys from people and then trying to start kind of a task force at St. Mary's in Davenport. Yeah, mostly helping with all the fundraisers, trying to keep APJ a little informed. Um, How was week-long training? Oh, week-long training <laughs> was great. <laughs> like Corey said, like you still use it to the day. Like I think about it all the time. What's in my self-interest? Um, building relationships with people that um, can be helpful both ways, not just beneficial to me, not just beneficial to them knowing what I need and want out of life and kind of going after it and that's been really important because as college students sometimes you kind of like I don't know like what my passions are or like everything so it's been really helpful in helping me discover those things so you got some big plans for next year don't you yes next year I am going to be uh, volunteering at Fr Franciscan Volunteers No Risk No Gain and it's in Aston Pennsylvania but uh, in the greater Philadelphia area and I'm going to be working at the Aquinas Center in South Philadelphia, working with immigrants, and I will be able to do some community organizing there, so that will be very helpful for my internship. Um, and whatever else they have for me there, I'm not quite sure, but 
I'm open to whatever happens. So I'll be living in community with three to four other volunteers, uh, male and female, and it's also associated with the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia. So. And Nick, I know you haven't been to CCHD training yet or week-long training yet, but have you given any thought to what you hope the internship will look like? Um, from what I've been hearing, I'm, I'm just becoming more and more excited every day. So like today, um, I got an email from a CCHD contact and um, gave flight information to um, Leslie. So the, every day it's just something new that I get to experience that um, I haven't even like gotten to start with it yet. Um, so like Rachel had mentioned it, like I'm a college student, you're kind of thinking, oh, what am I going to do? And never have I thought like I would be doing an internship um, through CCHD. So I'm just really excited for it. So yeah. Oh, and a little bit about myself. Um, <laughs> I uh, grew up in Grand Mound, Iowa. Went to was a parishioner at St. Joe's in Dewitt. Um, and I'm the oldest of four, so I'm a natural born leader, and I like <laughs> going out of my way <laughs> for other too. people. <laughs> so Corey, what's in your future? I am an occupational therapy student, so I'm in just finishing up my first year uh, in the OT program out of three. So technically I'm finishing my junior year of college. It's kind of confusing, but um, I hope to in the future work um, OT, as an OT in um, some sort of, I can't really put a finger on it yet, but even yesterday I was talking to someone from Omaha and OT, and she works with homeless veterans uh -huh. um, in that population, and uh, just everything she was saying sounded so up exactly what I want to do in the future, just things like that. Um, I know a nurse that's in the south side of Chicago right now, and there's OTs with her doing all of her work, so I just, just a bunch of different options so far, but I still have two more years to kind of figure it out, but yeah, do an OT, occupational therapy. Well, I think from what Leslie tells me that both of you have just done a superior job, way more than she even had hoped for, and I know that you're a big help to Quad City Interfaith, and I know that you have made CCHD really proud, and it certainly made me proud. <laughs> You, a couple of you have talked about Ambrosians for Peace and Justice. What do people in the diocese need to know about APJ? How can they be supportive, particularly for folks in the Quad City Metro? Awesome. Well, Ambrosians for Peace and Justice, it's a, um, it's a club at St. Ambrose. Um, fairly, I mean, it's a decent-sized group, um, but we focus on teaching um, the students, well, I would say the leadership in APJ really wants to instill in the group that it's two feet of social justice. So um, it's a different um, approach, I think, than um, a typical service group, which is, there's a lot of them on campus, um, but specifically APJ looks at both feet. So we talk a lot um, in APJ about legislation going on, different community events, and um, so we have a quarter um, so two quarters a semester is what we call them and this year we had an overarching theme of restorative justice um, and then each quarter we talked about a different facet of that um, but it was really cool this year I thought in particular that we could keep talking about the same topic and but just diving into different parts of it so oh, what I was going to go in with that um, so for every quarter we have to do so many um, action events and so many information events sort of thing. So um, the head of that chair, the chair for that quarter will talk about um, what he or she plans for um, that semester to inform the student body about that particular topic. Mm -hmm. This this um, this quarter is international restorative justice um, and our chairperson Angie is working on, um, she's having a panel with a Muslim student um, as well as, oh, I can't remember who she's all having on the panel, but they're going to talk about um, different experiences that they've had. 
So knowing that both the the one um, organization that you've mentioned, Quad Cities Interfaith, and the internship program is sponsored in large part based on a national collection that's taken in November. Any comments that you would make to people in 80 plus parishes as they approach an, that particular national collection? Yeah, I would say that, I don't know, like growing up I focused a lot on like charities and charities are great, but a lot of the change that needs to happen in our country is a lot of systemic change. And we need the charities along with that to get us to until we get the structural change that we need. But that change takes a long time and it takes a lot of money and it takes a lot of hard work. And I think it's hard for people to sometimes see what Quad Cities Interfaith is doing because it takes so long, but it's impacting so many more people's lives in the longer scheme of things um, in a very positive way. So I think just remembering that maybe you can't see like an everyday effect of what Quad Cities Interfaith is doing, but it's really doing a lot of great work and it has been in the Quad Cities for 30 years, so keep that in mind. I would say as a kid, I would never, ever, ever have thought that this is where I would be um, in college. Um, I never really, I mean, my parents also always took me to uh, the soup kitchen downtown Omaha, and that's where, I, that's why I, I was there before it was. <laughs> so um, I grew up with kind of the charity mentality in the house, but um, never really thought about social justice. And so um, CCHD um, providing a grant um, to have me as an intern, and I know I, I think I can kind of speak for a lot of the interns, it changed my life. Um, so that support from them really kind of shaped who I am today, and I'm very, very grateful. And definitely through QCI and CCHD, it wouldn't have um, been possible in the diocese, of course. So. And I would also say that we really need the young people to step up, and I think that the CCHD program is a great way to get leaders that you know are going to be invested for the long haul. Like I know me and Corey will, and hopefully Nick, once this is over, <laughs> will be very invested in working for social justice in the Catholic Church in the future. So that is kind of what we need from our young people, and so it's a great investment in the future. Absolutely. And I think with young people, you need to have enthusiasm um, for this to happen. Um, one thing that I really love is hands-on experience. So um, whether it be service trips or going to a soup kitchen or being an intern for CCHD, QCI, um, I like to get in there and like I have enthusiasm for this um, type of social action. And um, I think putting that enthusiasm into other youth is really important. Speaking about the future, I. I don't know, I think a lot of people my age, they're really longing for something more from the church than just going to church on Sunday. And I think social justice is kind of a way to get them reeled in. Like, they want to do something with their faith. They don't just want to go to church and come home and just be a personal thing. Like, they want it to affect the greater world around them. And that's where I see a lot of young people learning to, like, live out their faith. And I don't know, I think it might be a little bit different than other generations. I'm not really sure because I'm only in this generation, but um, <laughs> but I think if we really want to keep the church alive, that is the path that we need to be taking. So when I saw when I was in high, or when I was growing up in the Catholic Church, I saw a lot of um, mission trips, and that's kind of how I got into this work. I think that's how a lot of people do. Um, but then when I got to college, I was challenged by one of my good friends to think about uh, what the mission trip, who the mission trip was really benefiting. And it wasn't me or was it them, you know? Did it make me feel good and I go home and I feel better? Hmm. Um, so I think just challenging that and just saying there's another way to do good. Um, and I mean, I just don't think it's a thought, you know, if you know what I mean. I don't think people really take it to that next step to think about um, who is benefiting from their action, um, and obviously both feet are needed. We need the, all of that is needed. Just taking that step back and to realize that we also have to do the other foot. So I just think that's a big part of it is making sure that we're doing the action and the what's the other word? I can't think. Charity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah.